We're gonna move on to the next step right now. The last video you should have watched was the one how to troubleshoot if you are having problems with the burn and dodge tool. Again, um, they are problems that you're gonna all have. So even if you didn't have an issue doing with the first part of the project, please make sure you watch that video because when we shade our characters, you're gonna have different colors there and different colors react differently. So it's important to know on the burn and dodge tool that you can change the range, the shadows, midtones, or highlights and that will help you adjust how you can use the tool. So if the tool's doing nothing, make sure you're on the right layer where the color is that you wanna burn and dodge. And then if it's not behaving normally, check if you have the correct setting here. And I can't tell you which one works because you could see that it could be very different for any variety of colors. The default is always mid-tones. So we've colored that ball, we've shaded it, we were able to dodge it here and burn it there. And that was to make it look like the sphere uh, example that we had on this side. This one shows this light coming from one side, the top and the left, and sort of lightening up the top part of this. And while that sphere is rounded in three dimensions, it makes the lower part, the opposite side of where the light's coming, look darker and it casts that little shadow into there. So we were trying to emulate that to a certain degree here on this burn and dodge option. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna color um, this um, other ball that we've set up over here. I've obviously given you multiples to work with. And um, with this area, we're gonna color it a different color and we're gonna do it a slightly different way. So for those of you who already did this and just made a new version of this on this side, we're gonna change it up just a little bit and I'm, I just wanna do that to show you some different functions. So first things first, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go up to your layer window over here and we wanna to go to layer one. I wanna rename this layer. And to do that, I double click, you guys know this already, right on the word layer one. And I'm just gonna rename this one ball one. Okay. Now, you might notice if you try to click on this layer, if you don't click on the word, but you just click on the empty space, you're going to get the layer style window. This pops up, you obviously clicked in the wrong spot. We're not going to mess with these options right now. So if that pops up, just click X. If you want to change the name, click right on the word. If you miss that and you click on the gray area, you're going to get layer style, and that's not what we want. Now. I want to create a new layer, just like we created a new layer for every color. And I'm going to open up that layer over here, that layer one, I'm going to double click on it. It's blank and empty. You can see you should have three layers now. We're going to name that one ball two. Okay. Now I want to go in there and color it. I'm going to pick a different color than I used from the first one. I'll uh, slide around. I'll do something. All right. That looks like a, a different color. And I'll take this sort of greenish color. I'm gonna raise my paint bucket and I'm gonna to go to click it on there. And oh, all of a sudden my whole screen is green. And you can see over here in the layer, that's all green. Our other two layers, the ball in the background is still underneath here. Um, I'm gonna make a few mistakes on this one purposely because I know they're the problem issues that you'll have and I wanna show you how to fix it. So I, I colored everything accidentally. I'm gonna hit command, I'm sorry, control, control Z and hit that and undo that. Okay, so what did I forget to do? I forgot to select this circle. And how do we select it? We use the magic wand tool. The fourth tool down on your toolbar, it's underneath our object selection tool. Uh, it looks like a little sort of bean in a box. Um, we're gonna go to the magic wand. If you can't find it, you can always hit the W key. And the more times you hit the W key, it kind of scrolls through each one of those. So if you're having trouble, so three times will get you to the magic wand, looks like a firecracker. Now I'm gonna to try to select the area. This is kind of hard to see on the video, but when I click inside the circle here, um, you're gonna notice that I didn't get my little outline, this dashed line around the circle. I got that dashed line around the entire project. And if uh, that selection area, if I try to dump the paint bucket in, and dump it into the circle, once again, I'm gonna get a full green screen. And why is that? That is because there's nothing on this layer. So if I try to select with the magic wand, the magic wand selects everything within a border. And there's no borders here because this is completely blank. So to do this correctly, we wanna go back to the background layer. And again, your background layer should remain locked. The magic wand is magic, real magic. And it will even work on a locked layer as far as selection goes. So this time I'm gonna click, I'm gonna say this layer is locked. No, that's a problem.
So now I'm gonna make sure I'm on the background layer and of course this is locked. And then I'm gonna go over to my project and I'm gonna make sure I have my magic wand. This time I'm gonna select and click right inside the circle. And if you didn't see it, I'm just gonna undo that and do it again. I'm gonna click and you should see a little dotted dash line. It's kind of hard on my screen to see that, uh, but that's the selection area. And again, it's selected on the background. Now I'm gonna go grab my paint bucket I'm gonna to try to dump it in there and it's saying this layer is locked and that's good because I don't want you coloring on the background. We always wanna save our backgrounds. So in this case, I've needed to be on the background to select it. But now I'm switching back to ball two to color it. And when I click on there, you'll see everything works out fine. Um, so make sure that you go back to background to select this circle with the magic wand. But then when you've selected it, switch back to ball two and use your paint bucket. Okay, so now I've colored it. Now I'm gonna grab my burn and dodge tool. I'm gonna to start with my dodge tool. I always like to use the light first. I'm gonna to go to 225 and make sure I'm at zero once again. Now this one we shaded. Um, so we shaded this one so there was a light source coming from that top left. So this area was a little bit lighter down opposite of it was a little bit darker. So that was how we shaded it using light, all right? This time we're gonna shade it to kind of create the illusion of depth. So this is sort of without light, it's just a different way of thinking. To do this, what we wanna do is we wanna use the concept that what sticks out, which pops out towards us is gonna be lighter. All right, so this is a different way of thinking about shading than with the light source. And this can be helpful sometimes if you're doing um, what we're gonna do to our cartoon characters. Now you can always imagine that the light is coming from one side, meaning that it is coming I mean, from the left, the right, the bottom, the top. Uh, and you, you can be a scholar of how that works and, and do a lot of drawings and kind of see a lot of uh, images and kind of guess your way through that or use a reference, but sometimes we don't have those references and we kind of have to like invent or make up shading. And to invent and make it up, if we wanted something to pop out at us, generally uh, the human eye thinks of lighter colors as coming towards us or ascending. And what it thinks about darker colors, it looks at darker colors as being descending, uh, meaning they move towards the back. So for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna brighten up the center and we are going to burn the edges. Just so it's, um, we're basically just reinforcing the concepts and the ideas that we did on the first one, and I just want you to get more practice using the tool. But the idea here is that the center part, which sort of pops out because it's a sphere, it's like a ball, that one pops out in the center towards us and the edges get dark. It's just a different way of thinking about shading things. So again, I've used my burn and dodge tool. I use it the same way I did the last one. Um, again, I had mine on highlights for this particular one and it worked. Um, sometimes it will not work and we did go over in the previous video what to do as far as changing your range to work. Again, some colors work differently than others and again, it's hard for me to tell you which one works which way. So again, just remember you can always adjust with the burn and dodge. So for this one, what we wanna do is we want a little more practice with, with doing this. We wanna kind of lighten and every time I go over or something it makes it a little bit brighter and this third ball this third we have the original in the background we have ball one we have ball two this one over here we're going to do light in the center dark around the edges and that's going to be our practice for shading uh, i realize that some of you do have styluses and you do have a touch sensitive screen that you're working on that's great if you want to use the stylus, it might be e much easier for you or much more natural for you. I've been doing everything with the trackpad, the mouse pad on my laptop. I'm fine with that, you know, so it doesn't matter which you have. But I know a few of you did ask about the um, stylus. Go ahead and use it if you'd like. Uh, but we want to make sure we have the original over here. We have our shaded from our first part over there. And now the third one over here is light in the center dark on the edges. So two different types of shading that we're doing over here. Again, we've renamed our layers. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna save this as a PSD. You realize now that every since we don't have the program, we have to save as every time. And what happens is, is that we have multiple copies of our projects in our downloads folder. 
that's not a bad thing. Um, it's taking up some memory, but in case you ruin something, lose something, screw it up, we always know we have a copy that we can go back to. So you can always clean up the older copies and throw them away. And then lastly, to submit this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a screenshot of it. Most of you have mastered this already. And you wanna screenshot it at least with your picture and the layers window. It's important for me to be able to see your layers window. That way I can know what, if you made a mistake, what it was that you made a mistake with and how I can help you out. We're gonna submit this on the new assignment. It's gonna be second ball, burn and dodge. And um, I wanna give you a couple days to do that. As soon as you're done with it, please submit. All right, guys, uh, this is Mr. B and I'm signing off. And today was, um, how to shade the second.